Now that everything is modeled, I'm going to go over how I set up my low poly, my ID, and then my high poly groups. So I have my low poly, and it is the same as it was before. I've just renamed everything and have underscore low at the end. Substance Painter uses suffix on mesh names to identify what is a low poly, what is high poly, what is ID. They can be called anything. I like to keep it very simple with underscore low. And then I'm going to go over to my high poly. My high poly has everything that my low poly had combined with my high poly. So it has my low and my high poly combined into one. You see my low poly wall has my high poly wall data as well. And it is just called wall underscore high. My pipe one and two, there is no change. I just changed the suffix to underscore low, or from underscore low to underscore high. And then I have my trim piece, and I combined it again with my low poly and my high poly, combining it into one object. Finally, I have my ID which is an exact duplicate of my high group, and I just colorized it. You can use your high poly as your ID, just have it all in one if you want. I like to have separate groups so it's a little bit easier to go back and make changes if I have to. There's an easy way to rename in Maya. So if I did not have my, say my high poly group, let's get rid of it, I'm gonna hide my low poly. If I just had my ID group and I wanted to make a high poly, I would just select the group, duplicate it, I'm going to change the group name to wall underscore high with GRP, open it up, and then I'm going to select all of these components that need to be have a name change. And for something like this, you could easily do it manually, but when you have a more complicated model with several dozen or a hundred different objects, batch renaming is really convenient. I'm going to come up to modify and come down to search and replace names. When I go for search for, I'm going to search for ID and I want to replace it with hi. And then hit apply and everything that had ID is now underscore high. If you don't have any underscores and you need to, say, name everything in your group with the exact same suffix, oops, this tool will allow you to do that as well. So if you didn't have any suffixes and you need to add it on, you can't search for anything to replace because nothing is there. So if you just put in the dollar sign, that will take whatever is already there and add on to the end and hit apply and if you need to have an underscore for it to work in painter so I'm going to replace with underscore high and then it will be named properly the last thing I'd have to do is I'm just going to put Lambert 1 back onto my high group I now need to export all of these individually. I'm going to select my low group. I'm going to isolate. And then just marquee select all of these low poly objects and come up to file, export selection. And let me find the right folder. And I'm going to call this wall underscore low. The naming convention for the FBX file does not actually matter for Painter. It'll just make it easier for you to find which one you are looking for. So I have wall underscore ID and finally wall underscore high. Going to jump to Painter make a new project, I'm going to set it to 2K, select, 
and look for my low. You always load in your low poly. You never bring in your ID or your high poly when you are going to be doing baking. And hit OK. So you should only see your low poly objects. If you have high poly models here, or you, if you have more than one material in your texture set list, you need to go back to Maya and do some cleanup. I'm going to open up my baking settings, and I am just going to be baking out my normal map. So I have normal map selected. It needs to have a mesh, it needs to have that high poly mesh. Last semester we used use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. We're not doing that this semester. So I'm going to load in a high definition mesh, find my wall high, and I'm going to change this to 2K as well. And I'll do a bake and see what happens. So it worked pretty well. If you are getting, let's bring this up because sometimes it can cause problems. So if you're getting a weird kind of flaring out around your model, that will be your dilation width. I usually bring this down to around 15. I'm also not using my bake by mesh name. And the reason it is important to have is if you need to turn up your max frontal distance a lot for it to capture everything, you're going to start seeing parts of your wall bake onto, say, your trim piece. So I have this detail, this edge here, is baking onto my trim, and the pipe is baking onto the back of the wall. So that's when you would come down and say, bake by, mesh, bake by mesh name, and make sure that you have low and high with the same capitalizations as you had in Maya. So it's now a much cleaner bake without any of that edge scattering. I'm now going to bake out my ID map. And I'm going to change my high poly mesh suffix from high to underscore ID. And again, capitalization is important. Should go very, very quickly. And if you have any color bleeding, then you have to go back and figure out if there is something named incorrectly, or if you have a checkerboard, that probably means there is a naming convention that is incorrect. And since I have my normal map and my ID, I'm just going to bake all of my other maps now. So I have a nice bake with a lot of information on it from my high poly map. If when you zoom in, you realize it's a little bit uh, jagged and it doesn't look very clean, there's a few things that could be. It could be your UVs, and you just need to give them more UV space on the editor. If there's no more room to give, jumping back to Painter, you can turn up anti-aliasing, and that will clean up the edges a little bit. And you can also, even though I'm working at a 2K resolution, I can up my output size, say, to 8K, with anti-aliasing turned on and then bake. It will take much, much longer, so I'm going to pause the video. All right, so it finished baking, and you can see it is a much, much cleaner bake than what I had before, and looks very good with no uh, geometry baking onto where it shouldn't. And the really nice thing about having your high poly as your ID map is that you can come over and colorize your high poly even though it is uh, there's no actual geometry there so it gives you much more kind of creative liberty when you're texturing to have a more complicated ID map than if you just colorized your low poly model